People have been overclocking Raspberry Pis since the first one came out and the Pi 4 is no exception. I wanted to see if the Compute Module 4 could handle overclocking the same way and how it performed when it was overclocked. Some people in comments on my last video argued that the more compact chip arrangement on the CM4 would cause thermal issues and I wanted to test that theory. The first test, I tried it without a fan, but the Pi started throttling the CPU after about 3 minutes since it got really toasty as you can see in this footage from my Seek thermal camera. So I plugged in my giant Noctua fan to the J17 4-pin fan connector built into the I.O. board, and for all the rest of the tests I let it run full blast, moving a ton of air over the board on my desk and making me a little bit cold. At some point I'm going to work on a script that controls the fan speed using the I.O. board's built-in fan controller, but for now, it's full speed ahead. If you're going to do your own testing, there are a few commands that use vcgen command that you should know about, and they can help you see the current conditions on a Pi. There's measure clock arm, measure temp, and get throttled. Measure clock tells you the current clock frequency of the processor. If you put the watch command in front, you can monitor the frequency over time and see that it goes up to a maximum of 1.5 gigahertz when the Pi is doing a lot of work. Measure temp gives the temperature in degrees Celsius of the system on a chip. If this temperature nears 85 degrees Celsius, the Pi will start throttling the CPU to lower frequencies to save it from overheating. And finally, Get Throttled tells you whether the CPU has been throttled or not. Any value besides OXO means it's currently being throttled or it throttled at least once since the last boot. You can put watch in front of any of these commands and keep watching the values over time while you're doing your testing. Now that you know about some of the ways to see how the Pi is handling the overclock and thermals, it's time to actually do it. I wanted to get a nice clean 2 GHz out of my compute module. Its default clock maxes at 1.5 GHz and getting a 30% speed up feels pretty good to me. For any overclock you need to make sure you have a reliable power supply, otherwise things get kinda flaky. So to do the overclock, edit the slash boot slash config.txt file, uncomment the arm freak line, and set that section of the file to look like this. Over voltage equals 6, and then on another line, arm freak equals 2000. The over voltage allows the Pi to give the CPU a little bit of extra power required when overclocking the CPU frequency, and the arm freak sets a new maximum upper frequency limit. The highest allowed frequency is currently 2147 or 2.147 GHz, but I'm not sure why it's capped at exactly that frequency and not something like a clean 2150. If you know the reason, let me know in the comments, because that would be interesting to know. You could also set the GPU frequency higher up to 750 to boost the GPU clock, but I'm pretty happy with the GPU running at the default 500 MHz, so I just saved and closed the boot config, and then I rebooted the Pi with sudo reboot. Once rebooted, I monitored the frequency as I ran sudo apt-get update and confirmed it reached up to 2 GHz under load. And just an aside here, if you're trying to do this yourself and your Pi gets stuck booting and won't start up anymore, you can plug in a keyboard and hold down the shift key while booting to disable the overclock. Or you can mount the boot volume on another computer and comment out the overclock lines in the boot config file. So now the Pi is running at 2 GHz and I wanted to see how that affected performance. I ran the same three tests using Pharonix that I did in my initial CM4 review, and here are the results. The speed up in each benchmark was almost exactly 28%, which is expected since the clock speed difference between 1.5 and 2.0 GHz is, you guessed it, 28%. And if you want to run a test like this on your own, there's a link in the description below to a shell script that I used to both install and run the exact Pharonix test suite that I ran. I wanted to also see how the temperature on the CPU is faring, with the fan blowing air over the whole board. During the benchmarks, I plotted the temperature by logging it to a CSV file every second with this really simple Python script that grabs the temperature and writes it to a CSV file along with a timestamp. I ran this script while I was benchmarking, and here's a graph of that temperature. The temperature never went above 63 degrees Celsius, and there was no throttling at all. The CPU got the hottest during the first three video compression tests, but was able to stay a bit cooler through the other two tests, where it hovered around 40 degrees Celsius. Here's a thermal image of the entire board when it was under the highest load. And just a note, to take this thermal image in the one earlier in the video, I put a little Kapton tape on top of the SOC, so the temperature reading would be more accurate on the reflective metal surface. If you were performing a lot of network I.O. at the same time, the network chip would probably also be a bit warmer, but with active cooling, I don't really see any problems due to the chip layout on the CM4. Now, I could have stopped here, satisfied with the 28% CPU boost, 
but I had a sneaking suspicion NVMe performance could also be affected by overclocking. I couldn't find any definitive articles online about whether NVMe performance was directly impacted by CPU clock speed, because most papers discussing NVMe performance were more worried about things like a 1.5 gigabyte per second bus, slowing them down their 2 gigabyte per second NVMe drive. And apparently there aren't as many crazy people like me around thinking that the 300 megabytes per second I'm getting on a Raspberry Pi 4 is something to write home about. So I reran all the disk performance benchmarks from my review with the 2 gigahertz overclock on my Samsung 970 EVO Plus using this NGFF NVMe adapter, and the numbers for every type of disk operation saw a significant improvement. I wanted to make sure the benchmark wasn't an anomaly, so I ran the same benchmarks three times per benchmarks, two times in each condition. I ran them all with no overclock, then with overclock, then without overclock, and so on, every time the numbers were within a 1% margin of error. So I can say with authority that if you want to make NVMe storage even faster than it already was on the stock compute module 4, overclock it to 2 GHz and you'll get an extra 15% speed up. I also ran the benchmarks on the same drive over USB 3.0, but the results were the same with or without the overclock. And that makes sense, since USB 3 uses a dedicated chip controlling the access. So I think it's safe to say the Compute Module 4 hardware handles overclocking just as well as a Pi 4 Model B, which isn't really surprising given the chips are pretty much identical, even if the arrangement on the board is slightly more compact. And if you want to have the fastest possible storage, you should overclock the CPU and make sure you have some sort of cooling in place to prevent throttling. What else do you want me to test on the CM4? I'm planning on testing a few more PCIe cards, including an NVIDIA GPU and an Intel 4-port network interface, and I'll definitely share the testing results when I get them. Please consider subscribing and supporting me using the links below. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling. Fan, fan, pan. I did not plug the fan into a pan connector. Or required when underclocking, under, we're not underclocking, we're overclocking. I don't know why I said that, because it says overclocking. And making me a little bit cold. Oh, uh, there's people running around above my head. And that's not in my head. You can hear that, can't you? Maybe I shouldn't have built my office underneath the playroom.